Welcome, Travis Lawrence with Aero ECS. Today's session is on AirWatch mobile device management. So what I thought we'd do today is give you an actual look into what it looks like to manage an iOS, an Apple iOS device from AirWatch. So many of you may understand, you know, we need to be able to, as an IT organization, be able to manage these devices. But what does that look like from an administrative perspective? And then what does that really look like from a user perspective? I think it's beneficial. We often talk about the cloud side of things and how we deploy applications and we make that easier. But AirWatch really allows us to do that here. So um, what I'm going to do is look at this dashboard from the AirWatch side and then the iPad side here to kind of show you what that device management piece looks like. Um, so we'll start off here again. We've got our, our lab environment where we've got the, the AirWatch console dashboard on this side and then the iPad here. So what we're going to do is those profile pieces, um, we can see on the left here, as I underline these icons, we're going to create a profile to disable the camera portion uh, of the iPad. So think of a scenario where we where this is a, a corporate owned device where we want to disable these devices using AirWatch as a mobile device management tool. So from here, we will go into the AirWatch dashboard, and I will select Add Profile. And while this pulls up, you can see we've got a variety of operating systems that AirWatch supports. So again, this can be of a scenario where we're bring your own device, where a user would bring their device and have any of these different device types. Or in this scenario, it's more of a corporate piece because we're going to disable a camera, which is something we may not want to do in a, a, for a user's bring your own device. And here we can see on the left, we've got uh, the general section, which we'll fill out. But then we've got a bunch of different payloads as AirWatch terms them. So these are all the different types of things that we can uh, change or configure control from a IT department perspective. So there's a ton of these in here. And this is where I think it really is helpful for us to look at what what we can do restrictions wi-fi vpn email what have you and we can control those components uh, from a simple airwatch agent on the device which we'll, we'll get into after this component here so first i'm going to give this a name no ios camera and then i'll fill out a description here and we'll call this disable ios camera we'll also say oh, let's say we'll call this a camera and applications uh, related apps, maybe. So just to give an idea of what overall this this looks like. And then from here, I'm going to select uh, an assigned group. So uh, we can have different groups in AirWatch turn sort of have different devices grouped together, different business units. Maybe we have uh, other ways we want to group those. We can create what are called smart groups. In this scenario, I'm just going to do this from all devices. And that's all I really need to set here is here. We could save and publish, but we still need to establish that payload. I need to do that. So in this, again, we've got all these different types of pieces that I can I can leverage. We're going to go into restrictions and here and then we'll hit configure. And this is where I can actually uh, set up what restrictions I want to make available. So we can see here we've got a device functionality. Here's all the different types of things that we can restrict. So at the top was the uh, we've got video conferencing, screen capture, uh, passcode modification. If we look down here, just a ton of things. And this is where I think it's visually important to understand how granular we can get with device control. So it's something that's really beneficial. You know, allow or don't allow AirDrop, uh, YouTube, iTunes, uh, a variety of these parts and pieces that we as an administrative IT department can really control. Um, but in this scenario, I'm going to go back up. And, and we'll look at the, the camera component. So again, this is a scenario where it's a corporate device, maybe it's in a secure, secure highly secured environment, and I don't want to allow the use of the, the iOS camera and the related application. So if we hover over this, we can see that it says when this option is off, cameras are completely disabled, and the camera icon is removed from the home screen. If we also actually click that, then this gives us another description of what that looks like. So cameras are disabled, can't do FaceTime, photographs, those different things. So if I say save and publish, um, there's no records found because we haven't enrolled a device yet, but I will click publish here and that'll publish this profile. Now from here, we need to go set up an actual device that we can enroll in AirWatch and then push that profile to. So from here, we can go to the actual iPad side and that's where we will do the, the agent installation. So if I switch over to my app store icon. You can see I've already uh, searched for the AirWatch agent. 
through the App Store. Um, that's a component we you, you'd go out and any user can actually go out and search for AirWatch agent or AirWatch mobile device management agent. You can see there up in the right corner. And then we can actually download the, the, the agent, uh, the one that we see here on the, on the left side. So if I, so I will go ahead and click or touch AirWatch agent and we'll download and install this. This will just take a second for us to download. And this is really the endpoint management piece, so a small piece of software that runs on iOS or the, all those other operating systems that we saw that would really allow us to uh, control the device and manage the profiles that we want to manage things like you know cellular service, uh, location-based services, and what have you. So once that piece is installed there, you can see that I've got that. We can go back to the dashboard. I do need to have the group ID. So this is a way we really understand which device I'm going to apply the profile to. So I will capture that information down. This is what I need to keep track of. Um, and then from there, once we actually enroll this device, we'll need that code. So now I'm saying, let me open up the AirWatch agent on the iPad. And once that opens, we have a variety of ways that we can enroll the device. So we could do that through a user email, a uh, QR code, but in this case, I'm going to actually do it through the server details portion, just so we know uh, how that works and, and what that looks like. So this part in the middle here, server details, is, is what we'll use. So I will grab the information that I have from here, and then I'm going to enter this in on the device. So if I enter the server information, uh, I set this up for a user. I set up a user previously, so this is Han Solo. Uh, and then we need that group ID that we had previously. So, so it was T. Lawrence, and then we enter in the inner piece there. So now we'll load up. Uh, this component. So this is a way to register with the AirWatch server. Um, then we need to put in those user credentials. So this is a user that I created in the AirWatch management console. Now we can, we, we put in that user's username and password. And we can hit go. That provides the credentials. This gives a little information about why would you actually enable device management. So access company resources or remove company data and, and, and loss or theft times. Uh, we didn't apply a profile that would actually do remote wipe and whatnot, but those are obviously things that we can do here. So once we've completed that, the user understands that they're enrolling this device really for corporate management. And then from here, we'll see the profile screen and, in, and this is where we can actually install the profile. So we get some information about the certificate, a little about the details, um, and other parts and pieces, just so the user understands. But what we'll do is click install here. You can see up in the right-hand corner. And that will actually install this profile. I need to enter the, the local device uh, passcode. So I'll do that here. And then once I do want to install the profile, and we can hit install. So that'll go through the profile installation process here. And this gives them more information again, uh, able to remotely manage your iPad. You can kind of see that portion at the bottom. So again, most of the time we get users just clicking through next, next, next. And there are ways to actually automate the installation of this profile. But here, if we look at that portion, we can see, make sure the user is understanding what does this do? If this is my personal device that I'm doing BYOD, I want to understand, well, what does corporate have control over? So uh, do I want to trust the remote management? We'll click trust. And then we can see that that MDM profile is installed and they can see that. We'll touch base on this a little later, but they can see that under general and general settings on their iOS device. And then do we want to open, we'll open up the agent. So that is the application that we just installed to complete that authentication process and the registration back into the AirWatch uh, management server there. So from there, we, we see our authentication is all complete and we're ready to go back. So let's take a look at a little bit of what actually shows in the AirWatch agents once that component is installed. 
So do we want to get notifications? I'll click OK for yes. So you can see this is my iPad, uh, what iOS version, what type of iPad. It's an iPod, iPad Air. Uh, the, the device is enrolled. Uh, the connectivity is normal. And then we can see things like Wi-Fi network, uh, some advanced information, battery, free memory, what disk space on the actual iPad device. So from here, let me jump back into the console and we can see now if we look at the at the home page, if I scroll back over on the iPad back to the initial page, it's kind of difficult to see the, the camera icon, uh, the FaceTime icon and the photo booth icon that were there are now have been removed. Um, we'll jump back into the interface so you can see w what does it actually look like when I add and remove and how quickly that process happens. Uh, but those are gone because that profile was applied. Once we enrolled that device, AirWatch understands, okay, this is this profile applies to this device, apply it immediately once it checks in, as it were. So we can see there, if I highlight under these pieces, that those icons are gone. But if we go remove that profile, as we will in here in a moment, uh, we'll see those icons reappear. So we can really be dynamic with that. So if I go back and click Profiles, I'll click List View. This is going to give me a view of those existing profiles. So here I created the No iOS Camera portion. Uh, if we scroll over to the right, we can see that the status, the green status, means it's actually been enabled. It's been applied to all devices. And we'll, and then we'll kind of drill into what this looks like. So if I click on this, I can actually edit that component. Again, this is the view that we had before. But we want to see what happens uh, with a profile if we if we make changes to that, how quickly that that those changes are propagated to that device. We can also see here, let me show you what a device view looks like. So we can see that my device, once we install the agent, I've had my, my H Solo iPad iOS 9.2 has been enrolled. Um, the email address that it came from. We can also see some information about uh, when was it last seen, what platform uh, it was installed on, the user's email address, uh, is it enrolled and verified, and what have you. We can also see the dashboard here. So mine doesn't have a lot of information since I only have a single device, but this is a good overall view for, for the enterprise. So how many devices have been compromised? How many overall devices do we have? When were they last seen here? So we can look at number of days, last seen overview, uh, enrollment type of platforms. So we can see iOS devices, what version of iOS do we have, breakdown of operating system and what have you there. So a good way for you know m managing tens or dozens or hundreds of devices, we can get an overall breakdown of what that looks like. But if we go back into the profiles view here, we can look at, again, how, what happens when I actually ap apply or, or deactivate a profile. So if I select that, I select more, I can actually toggle the activate or deactivate portion of this. So when I do this, it'll actually prompt me again and say, click OK to confirm the activation or deactivation of this profile. Um, I'm going to click OK, and this is going to deactivate that. And we can see instantly that those icons here pop back in. So we get our camera back, we get FaceTime back, we get photo booth back. And um, we also see that the profile here disappears because that, these are, this is a view of the active profiles. Um, so that, one's no, that one has been deactivated, so we don't need that any longer. So if I go click and list back in my filters, I can see here that the status will set this from active to all. And we can see that my no iOS camera profile is, is there again. So now what happens if we talk again, keep an eye on the iPad portion here when I click activate, deactivate, and see how quickly this is actually applied. Uh, again, thinking of this in a as a user perspective. So, I mean, this is being used from VMware's uh, mobile device management piece. So when I click OK here, watch those icons on the, in the iPad screen. We go up and we click that. Now, as soon as that profile is applied, the, the, that components are removed from there. And again, this is not a lab environment. This is actually using VMware's lab environment. So my iPad is collected, connected to my local network and we're pulling down that profile from from a, a server that's farther away. So um, it happens very quickly. Another piece is if I go in here on the iPad into general, as I mentioned before, we can see the profile. I think this is helpful uh, for IT, but for users, we can see if we hit restrictions, camera not allowed, and then sharing managed documents using AirDrop is not allowed. So we can actually see from the device what profiles are applied and what is restricted from there as well. 
So let's look at creating another profile in this scenario. So what if we wanted to restrict users from downloading uh, applications? So we can go and create another profile if I go to add. Not that we want to be all about um, restricting in this scenario, but a lot of that is really management, again, of how we, how we control a device. What can a user do? What can they not do? Um, so this may be different in bring your own device scenario. So we'll create one where I can actually uh, just, just disable the app store and make it so, again, this may be a very secure environment. We don't want a user to, to be able to download an, a, a non-approved application, as it were. So uh, if I just say remove Apple App Store, we have a lot of the same settings we had before. If I go down, uh, we'll assign this back. You can see we've got a variety of groups, so I could go all devices, all employee-owned devices. So again, we can separate the BYOD versus um, all devices. But in this scenario, I'm just going to select all devices since mine is the only one enrolled. Um, there's a ton of other options here, but um, again, now we've named that, but now we need to actually enable the particular payload as we saw before. So this is the payload portion of that. Um, we saw, again, I think it's important to be able to understand all the granular options, but if we hover over this and we click again, we can say, when this option is off, the app store is removed from the device, user cannot install any applications. Um, this includes through MDM, applications cannot be installed through iTunes or Apple Configurator. So it completely disables a lot of that. Again, save and publish. This time, since the device has been enrolled, we can see the, the friendly name of that device and what's going, what's going to actually happen when we publish it. So that will take effect as soon as we publish uh, this, this component. And I think it's good to see, okay, in, in the past we weren't affecting a device because it wasn't enrolled, but now uh, Han Solo's uh, app store is going to go away and he's going to, uh, hopefully he's not upset. Um, so that's saved successfully. And again, quickly again, we saw I underlined the, the app store component there, but that disappears as soon as that profile hits um, as soon as the iPad really registers with, with AirWatch, and we can kind of see what that looks like. So hopefully this gives you a good overview. I know we talk a lot about mobile device management and what that means. Uh, a lot of the time, I think it's important to see, you know, a quick demonstration of that. Again, I always uh, try to keep these videos short so we can leverage these before you get on a call with a customer, because you don't always have time to get knee deep in every product, and whether you're sales or technical, we want to be able to have that refresher of, okay, what is a, a customer trying to do? I can kind of visualize that process as we're talking through them on a sales call or, or even do a demonstration that way. Um, so I hopefully th this was helpful in seeing, again, especially many of you probably leverage, use iOS devices in your daily life, and you can see that from a user perspective as to how would that work for me? What would I see? Maybe your corporation uses some type of mobile device management. We can see how much easier AirWatch is in this scenario and what types of uh, devices and, and operating systems we can actually control and how granular we can get and how quickly those profiles are applied. So as always, hopefully this was helpful. Be on the lookout for additional AirWatch and other VMware videos. Uh, and thanks for joining us.